All right, so let's look at some, whoops, differentiation problems. Let me get my tablet ready here. Oops. Okay, so first we want to differentiate y equals the inverse secant of 5s. Okay, so in other words, we're looking for dy ds. All right, so that's going to be one over the absolute value of 5s times the square root of the square of 5s minus one times the derivative with respect to s of 5s. So I'm really showing all my work here. All right, well, that's just going to give me, let's talk about the derivative of 5s first at the end. That's just gonna give you a five. Uh, the absolute value of 5s can be written as 5 times the absolute value of s. That is a, I don't like to write my s's in print because then they kind of look like fives. But then when I try to write them in script, they don't always come out that good either. Okay, I think that's better. All right, and then this I'm just going to write as 25s squared minus one. So notice you can get rid of those fives and the derivative just comes out to be one over the absolute value of S times the square root of 25 S squared minus one. All right, next example. Find the derivative of Y equals the inverse cosine of E to the negative T. <clears throat> Let me write down the formula this time. Maybe that would be helpful. So we're using uh, the derivative with respect to, I'm just going to write it the way that it was on that other slide. I'm going to write it in terms of x, d, uh, derivative with respect to x of inverse cosine u. Remember, this is the one that's the opposite of the inverse sine of u. So this is going to be negative one over the square root of one minus u squared times du dx. Okay, so when we find the derivative with respect to t, because we want dy dt, it's gonna be the derivative with respect to t of inverse cosine e to the negative t we are going to have negative one over the square root of one minus the square of e to the negative t times the derivative with respect to t of e to the negative t. All right, well, let's, uh, let's pretty up the bottom first, so. I think I can just barely squeeze this answer onto the bottom here. This is gonna be the square root of one minus e to the negative two t. The derivative of e to the negative t is e to the negative t times negative one, isn't it? So what that's going to, oh, let me show my work. So we have this negative here, and then the derivative of e to the negative t is negative e to the negative t. So the two negatives knock each other out and just leave you with e to the negative t over the square root of one minus e to the negative two t. See, it's not that bad. It's just a new uh, differentiation formula. And finally, this is a fun example. So I'm going to let you in on a secret. A lot of times, not always, especially not in Calc 1, but whenever you see sort of a 
kind of messy looking function like this and it's asking you to find the derivative, it might be that the problem is rigged so that the derivative comes out to be something really nice and simple. I have a feeling that might be the case with this one. So let's see. We want to find dy dx. All right. So first we have uh, the derivative of natural log x squared plus four. So you remember that formula from back in 7.2. That derivative is going to be one over x squared plus four times the derivative of x squared plus four, which is two x. Now I have to find the derivative of x inverse tangent x over two using the product rule. Now be careful because there is a negative in front of this whole thing. So when we write out our product rule, let's put it in parentheses. I hope I can get the whole thing to fit in there. All right, so the product rule goes the first times the derivative of the second. So it's gonna be x times the derivative of inverse tangent x over two. So that is the one and only part of this that makes it a uh, 7.6 problem, all right? The derivative of inverse tangent x over two is going to be one over one plus the square of x over two times the derivative of x over two, which is one half. Okay, so that's first times the derivative of the second plus the derivative of the first times the second. So that's just gonna be a one times the inverse tangent of x over two. All right, so now let's try to pretty this up. We have two x over x squared plus four minus, we'll go ahead and distribute this uh, minus. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, well, we could put the x up here. And we could put the two down here. And then we have one plus x squared over four, right? And then this is minus because remember we're distributing the minus sign, the inverse tangent of x over two. Okay, well, what is this uh, here gonna turn into? I have a feeling something nice. Uh, you know what, let's tack another two. We already have a two right here. I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by another two because I would really like this to be a four. So I can knock out this four. You might be able to see where this is going. We have two X over X squared plus four minus two X. Now we're gonna distribute the four and that's gonna give us four plus <gasps> four times X squared over four is just X squared. Oh my goodness. Yep, this problem was totally rigged so that it would give you a nice answer. Goodbye, goodbye. The derivative of that nasty looking function is just negative inverse tangent of x over two. It's too bad we couldn't also get rid of the negative, but <laughs> that's okay. All right, so that brings us to our integration formulas. Uh, these are basically the reverse of the differentiation formulas we were just looking at. Uh, so I'll let you uh, peruse those for a minute. If you'd like, uh, go ahead and pause the video and write those down. And then we will do some examples. So here are the examples, and now we'll switch over to the tablet. Okay, so the first example is the integral of one over x times the square root of five x squared minus four. 
with respect to X. The trick with these integration problems is first of all recognizing is it an inverse sine, an inverse tangent, or an inverse secant. So uh, if you look back at those differentiation formulas, you will find that uh, one formula involves the square root of a squared minus x squared. One involves the square root of x squared minus a squared. And then one involves a squared plus x squared with no square root. So hopefully you can agree that uh, the problem we're looking at looks the most like this one. And that was in the inverse secant formula. So the formula that we're talking about is the integral one over u times the square root of u squared minus a squared is equal to, now I have to peek for a second because, okay, I remember that two of these formulas involve uh, have a one over a at the beginning and one of them does not. And I have trouble remembering which is the one that uh, doesn't and it's the inverse sign that doesn't. Okay. So this formula is one over a times the inverse secant of absolute value u over a plus c. So we need to figure out who is playing u, who is playing a. Well, uh, you see the four there, so that means a squared is four, which means a is two. Okay, now the u is just a little tricky. <clears throat> we really need to think of this problem like this, the integral of one over x times the square root of the square of root five times x minus four. And that's gonna make u the square root of five times x. And in fact, let's do this as a u substitution. It's the thing that you've heard me refer to before as a baby u substitution. Um, I have not really sort of satisfactorily explained uh, baby u substitution. Once I do explain it, uh, you'll see that I'm able to do those integration problems a little faster. Uh, maybe when we get to chapter eight, I'll do that because chapter eight is uh, basically whole big bag of integration tricks. All right, so it'll be helpful to have that. So let's let u equal root five times x, which is gonna make du root five dx. But of course we don't want the root five, so let's divide that out. And that means that dx is going to get replaced with one over root five du. So this integral is going to become one over root five times the integral du over, oh, now I have to be careful. What am I going to replace that x with? Well, if u is root five times x, then that means x is u over root five. And that is really what I have to put there, but actually that's gonna be convenient. And then the square root will become a uh, square root of u squared minus four. So what's gonna happen with that root five now, look at your denominators outside, your denominator is root five and inside it starts with u over root five. So we can actually just cancel those root fives which just leaves us with the integral du over u times the square root of u squared minus four, which according to our formula is one over a, which is one half times the inverse secant of the absolute value u over two plus c. But like I always tell you, it's not about you. 
In this case, it's about X, right? So final answer, one half inverse secant, absolute value, root five times X over two plus C. See, it's just keeping track of who's playing U, who's playing A. All right, next example is a definite integral. Uh, kind of similar to the last one. So the first thing you should ask yourself, and I'm going to give you a couple seconds to answer this question before I answer it for you. Does this look most like an inverse sine, an inverse secant, or an inverse tangent? Look at the pattern. Well, this one looks most like an inverse sine, doesn't it? So that formula is integral du over the square root of a squared minus u squared is just inverse sine u over a plus c. All right, so in this problem, uh, a squared is nine, which means a is three. And this is another one, just like the last one, we're gonna have to rewrite the given integral goes from zero to three root two over four ds over the square root of nine minus, and now instead of writing four s squared, I'm gonna write the square of two s. So that means u is two s, and I'm going to make that my u substitution. Let u equal two s. which means du is two ds, but I don't want a two, so we'll divide it out. And that means that ds is going to get replaced by one half du. Now this is a definite integral. You know me, I'm gonna change my limits of integration. Since s is going from zero to three root two over four. Oh dear, I hope you can see that. That means that two, uh, u equals two s is gonna go from zero to two times three root two over four, which is three root two over two. <clears throat> so the new integral is going to be, um, <clears throat> ds is going to get replaced with one half du over the square root of nine minus u squared. And this integral is going to go from zero to three root two over two. <clears throat> All right, let's copy that over again. Okay, so according to the formula, that's going to come out to uh, the one half just comes along for the ride and then it's going to be the inverse sine <coughs> of u over three. Now remember we changed our limits of integration so we do not have to go back to s. All right, so this is going to be one half times the inverse sine of three root two over two divided by three is just root two over two minus the inverse sine of zero. So now you can see one reason that we uh, started with the examples that we started with. I had to make sure that you remembered how to calculate inverse sine of root two over two. The inverse sine of root two over two is pi over four, right? And the inverse sine of zero is zero, which means the value of this definite integral is pi over eight. 
And that brings us to this problem, which I will admit is a little bit of a doozy. So hold on to your hat, all right? So when you start thinking about, does this look most like an inverse sine, an inverse secant, or an inverse tangent? <clears throat> well, you would probably agree it looks most like an inverse tangent only because it doesn't have a square root anywhere to be seen. But, uh, and you would be right, but there is something else there that might be bothering you. That minus 6t term might be bothering you a little bit. So I need to explain what we're going to do with that. First of all, let me show you the formula that we're going to use. We're going to use the um, integration formula that involves inverse tangent, which is integral du over a squared plus u squared equals one over a times the inverse tangent of u over a. And you start to see the problem right away. So t squared minus 6t plus 10 is not written in the form a squared plus u squared. I cannot tell what a is and I can't tell what u is. So believe it or not, if I, if I asked you, okay, so what do you think I'm gonna do with the t squared minus 6t plus 10? I bet if we were in a class full of 45 students, there might be, there would be a handful of you that would, I think, uh, uh, come up with the, the correct trick, even though you probably haven't used it in a while. We are going to have to rewrite that t squared minus 6t plus 10 by completing the square. Remember completing the square? <clears throat> okay, so before we get started on the actual problem, let's talk about t squared minus 6t plus 10. <clears throat> I need to write it in the form a squared plus u squared. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so here's how we're gonna do that. We are going to complete the square uh, with this t squared minus 6t. So how does completing the square work? Well, this is how I explain it to my mass C class, my pre-cal class, any class it comes up in. You take the negative six, which is the t uh, coefficient. You divide it by two, and then you square the answer. So what this is telling me is that I really need to get a t squared minus 6t. I really need to get a plus 9 next to that t squared minus 6t. Okay? But I can't just go around changing a plus 10 into a plus 9. Um, so we're going to take that 10 and we're going to write it as 9 plus 1. The other thing you can do is, as soon as you write the plus nine, write a minus nine, and then put the plus 10. It does the same thing. All right, so then uh, this t squared minus 6t plus 10 is going to get rewritten in the form t minus three squared, which is all of this, plus one. Okay. So take that in for as long as you need one nice thing about one nice thing about learning this from a video i know that there are lots of things about it that aren't so great <laughs> but one thing about it that is great is that whenever you're confused and need a minute to think about something you can always pause the video okay so that is going to uh, turn my problem into something that will work a little bit better which is t minus 2 over the square of t minus three plus one, that integral with respect to t. <clears throat> All right. Now, let's see, what do I want to do next? There is one other thing here that we're going to have to fix. And I'm trying to think when would be the 
Uh, I think now would be the logical time to do that. So let's, um, let's do our U substitution now. Uh, in this case, U is going to be T minus three, which is going to make DU. I don't, I don't always think about uh, doing this kind of U substitution. Uh, DU is just going to be DT. But then what am I going to do with that T minus two? Well, here's what we're gonna do with the T minus two. Since, uh, since T minus three is equal to U, if I were to add one to both sides of that, that would tell me that T minus two should get replaced with U plus one. I think we can work with that. So then this integral is going to become integral U plus one over U squared plus one DU, right? And now we are going to separate that into two integrals. First integral is going to be u over u squared plus one. And the second one is going to be one over u squared plus one. Now, I want you to look those integrals over for however, you know, as long as you need. And think about, okay, one of those is probably going to be what we just learned in this section. And maybe the other one is also what we learned in this section, or maybe it's something that you learned previously. All right. So in this case, it's actually the second integral that is what we learned about in this section. <clears throat> this integral here is just going to become inverse tangent of u. But what trick am I going to use for the first integral? Well, that's going to be another substitution. All right. Uh, how about a z substitution? If I let z equal u squared plus one, then dz is going to be two u du, but I don't want it to. So I'm gonna divide both sides by two and u du is going to get replaced with one half dz. So here's what we have. And I promise we're almost finished. The first integral is just a one half integral dz over z. The second integral is our new friend one over u squared plus one du. Our old friend integral dz over z, that's just one half or natural log absolute value z. And then the second integral is our new friend, that's the inverse tangent of u plus c, right? So u, stood for, well, let's see, let's, let's undo the Z first. So Z stood for U squared plus one, right? And when I replace uh, Z with U squared plus one, I can actually lose the absolute value because U squared plus one is never negative. And then we'll put everything back in terms of T. So u was t minus three, remember? So we're gonna write this as one half natural log t minus three squared plus one, which if you really wanted to, you could write that inside expression back as t squared minus six t plus 10. I'm not gonna bother. And then uh, this is the inverse tangent of t minus three. 
And whenever I get through with an integration problem this complicated, I always joke, okay, but remember no credit if you forget the plus C. <laughs> right. Years ago, I had a student, years and years ago, I was teaching at another college and I made that joke. This was a uh, Calc 2 summer class. And I made that joke, okay, no points if you don't write the plus C. And this student just looked like he had a great big chip on his shoulder. And, um, and I, I got it out of him that the reason he was taking uh, Calc 2 in the summer at a community college was that he had taken it in the spring at his regular university and uh, the instructor had given some great big assignment that was worth a whole lot of points with a whole bunch of integrals on it. And he had forgotten the plus C on every single problem and had gotten a zero. And that was the reason he was taking Calc 2 in the summer because a zero on that great big assignment meant he didn't pass uh, the course. I personally thought that was a little extreme <laughs> of the instructor to do that. So um, of course, with online homework and online stuff, it, it doesn't really matter as much. I, I, uh, I, I think my lab will mark you wrong if you forget the plus C. Um, if you were doing it for me on paper and you know there were 10 problems and you forgot the plus C on every single one, I would probably ding you on one of them and then say, okay, well, at least they were consistent. If they forgot plus C on one of them, why would they remember it on the other one? So right? that's just a story I'll always remember. But anyway, yes, yeah, some integration problems are very intense like this. It's just uh, the way it is. Uh, we get through it. Anyway, speaking of through it, we are now through section 7.6 and I will see you next time.